Van in that seven spot. Skyler Serdash in the eight spot. Riley Crane in the final nine spot in the first ball by Courtney Wallace and the Huskers. Gets us underway, Skyly. Yeah, absolutely. A good matchup here on this Friday afternoon. And Courtney Wallace in the circle for Nebraska. Looking to create some momentum here for the Huskers defensively. And yeah, Wallace has had a stellar year. Has the Big Ten high, 19 wins. Yeah, and that's over 156.2 innings. So definitely has a huge presence there in the circle and can get it done for the Huskers. The one and one count. Outside two and one. And Wallace's last time out, it was a win in a complete game of seven innings. Where she allowed five hits, two runs, one earned run, and six punch outs versus Indiana on April 15th. And again, with that Creighton game being canceled on Tuesday, this is a hitter's count, three and one. Wallace gets that must needed break that the Huskers really want and allows her to really have that extra momentum coming into the weekend. Yeah, and she brings a veteran presence as a senior for the Big Red, just leading the team in that aspect. That one fouled back by Keller. Full count here, Wallace having to work heavily to start this one. For Katie Keller, the grad student from Geneva, Illinois, finished last year with a 433 batting average. And picking up right where she left off with a 343 average this year. As she grounds that one over, it's over to second, scooped up over to first, in time. And Kaneda works in conjunction there with Maya Felder over at first for the first out of the game. Back in high school, a unanimous first team All-American and actually was the 2019 Big Ten Player of the Year, Skyly. Yeah, Conway, a huge addition for this Wisconsin roster and definitely plays a huge role offensively. Wisconsin not doing so hot on the offensive side, but Conway adds a huge advantage for them. And Courtney Wallace getting the start for Nebraska is the payoff there outside. The Huskers defensively behind the plate. Ava Breadwell at first, Maya Felder at second, Caitlin Kaneda, Billy Andrews at short, Sydney Gray at third. In right is Caitlin Neal. Center is Brooke Andrews, and in left field is Abby Squire. And on offense, the designated players, Abby Newland, the pitch by Wallace inside. And Wallace has been working a lot with that fastball in these first two batters, trying to paint the outside of the, uh, trying to paint the picture on the outside of the plate, but just not getting that generous call from the umpire. Yeah, she's still trying to find her rhythm there, and Wallace is typically known for going outside and getting that call, just challenging uh, the batters to go away with it, and that's what she's trying to do here again today. I think she's trying to challenge the umpires to make that <laughs> difficult call again. Umpires behind the plate, Tanya Garrig at first, Matt Jackson, Mike Hernandez over at third. It's 48 degrees and windy. The wind is blowing 19 miles an hour to the southeast. And that ball pitched inside, and Courtney Wallace allows her first base runner on the afternoon. And that's Kayla Conwent drawing the walk. And she was a pinch runner last time out against Northwestern in game two on Sunday, April 14th, and actually scored a run. So again, this is a position she's used to. You could see that huge leadoff. Well, yeah, right now she's on the play on, on, on first base, as you could see, but a very aggressive runner, and they like her in that spot. It really gives them a lot of speed on the bases. Yeah, and just definitely a different strategy and tactic that the Badgers are getting used to using now, adding her in for the pinch runner position. One ball, one strike, one out here for Courtney Wallace. Huffle last time out against Northwestern in game two of that doubleheader on Sunday. 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Looking to get back after that rough outing. 1 and 2 the count here. Got Nevin on first. Wallace. The payoff. Outside, and again, Wallace loves that fastball working to the outside or really the inside. She's never, she's not, I would say, she doesn't place her pitches the highest or the lowest. They're pretty even at the waist. It's just whether they're going to be inside or outside. Yeah, she just really looks horizontally there at the plate. That one popped up. 
Calling for it is Sydney Gray third and gets the put out there. Two outs here in the first inning. Gray waving off Billy Andrews there at shortstop. Molly Schlosser takes the breaking ball outside for ball one. An interesting thing about Schlosser, right? I mean, batting 275 with the homer and 19 RBIs, but she's actually tied for fourth in the Big Ten with three triples. So, folks, watch out in those gaps in the outfield. Schlosser with a busy week in Week 10 as well. She led the team batting 500 with a double, triple, and her first career home run. So, a lot of slugging coming out of Schlosser last week. Wallace already at 18 pitches. The runner going, Nevin with the steal attempt, tag out, Billy Andrews puts an end to that first inning. But the throw is just as good as the tag from Ava Bredwell and with that, it is a 0-0 ball game. Courtney Wallace in a little bit of trouble, nears 20 pitches in the top of the first, but the Huskers get out of it clean. They're up to bat here in the bottom of the first. You are watching Big Ten Softball on Big Ten Plus. In the circle for the Badgers, she was the Big Ten Player of the Week last week, and that's all due to earning a run average of .72. Not too many pitchers at this level can do that, but she's able to hold her opponents to a low runs scored amount. And Billy Andrews, one of the most dangerous hitters in the Big Ten, and really grew up that way in the state of Nebraska. A Gretna native swings and misses there, one and one the count. Billy Andrews at one point last year had a 23 game hitting streak. But focusing on this year, I mean, she's fourth in the Big Ten in hits with 51. She's ninth in OPS. And she's tied for third in home runs with 11. Again, that OPS as 1.091. So Andrews with those numbers as she takes the breaking ball inside. Yeah, Andrews just a very intense batter for this Nebraska offense and someone who Rhonda Ravel has relied on for the past few years. And she always gets it done, it seems like, for the Big Red. Andrews drives that one to left field, back at the wall. There it goes, nearly out of the park. It's off of Bannon's glove and Andrews with a stand-up double. And that's what you want from your leadoff hitter if you're Nebraska. If that one nearly left. I think if the wind is not blowing 19 miles an hour to the southeast, that one leaves. Little sibling rivalry there always makes competition interesting. Billy Andrews on second right now. Kaneda batting, bunting attempt. Andrews stealing and slides and glides safely into third. A runner even closer to scoring position now. What a risky steal there by Andrews, but got there in time and just under the tag there. Andrews now five for five on stolen bases this year. Wisconsin not going to challenge. Rhonda Ravel at third base. Loves to be aggressive with her players on the base path. She is a big fan of sending the runners. Right, and she puts a lot of trust in her players and you can see that as they have a lot of uh, power on the base paths. Kaneda takes that one outside. Now the freshman, I think from Cerritos, California. I mean, you don't see many freshmen. I mean, we've seen it with Billy Andrews for sure. Get the amount of playing time she has this year. One point Big Ten freshman of the week back on March 6th. And what gave her that spot is she fouls it back as she had 471 and had five RBIs at the Hillenbrand Invitational. Yeah, and Kaneda six in the Big Ten with a 398 batting average. That leads the team. You don't see that from a freshman very often either. So just staying composed is, I think, what her mindset is as she enters the batter's box every single time. She's also fifth in the Big Ten and hits with 49. Sees that one, drives that one through the gap and brings home Andrews, but it's scooped up on the play by Hubbard but it's not in time. Over to first, and Kaneda with the RBI, and it's a one nothing lead for the Big Red. Gray on the air, hitting 279. 
sees pitch number one as a strike. And again, that Hillenbrand Invitational was really a breakout session for the Big Red. And that is actually where Sydney Gray hit a team high, 500. She also did that in the Purdue series, hitting 50%. Kaneda coming over to Ronda Ravel. And I think they're going to record that as an out. There was a bit of confusion as it appeared she was safe. It was ruled a single. So Kaneda left the bag early, causing an out for the Huskers. And Rhonda Ravel consoling Kaneda. She really couldn't believe what happened as that takes away a runner on base and a possible RBI opportunity for Nebraska. And we've seen probably three or four stoppages of play. Or one, one and oh the count, excuse me. Now one and one. Gray last time out against Indiana on the 15th went two for four. Two ribbies and two runs and only struck out once. And she's part of a junior class that is really taking this Nebraska softball program to the next level as Gray fouls that one to the side with a late swing. Yeah, if you're on to Ravel, you can't ask much more of the junior roster here that she has. I mean, you have the Andrews sisters, uh, Caitlin Neal, who is strong offensively and defensively, Sydney Gray, Abby Squire. So just a huge list of juniors that it's going to be hard to make up for when they leave. And again, Canedo ruled with the hit on a single to short. That one's fouled away by Gray. So a hit, but got a little jumpy on the bases resulting in that out. One and two, the count to Gray. The Tucson, Arizona native. Sees the pitch, drives that one. Over to short, scooped up by Hubbard over to first. That one's wide of Keller. And Gray is safe at first. Six of her hits have left the yard. Felder stands pretty far off the plate. as She sees ball one there. Yeah, she does, and it looks like she took a couple steps in the front of the box. Uh, just a little bit more comfortable there, but like you said, a few inches away from the plate more than some other players. Yeah, I mean, that left back foot heel is on the edge of the box as that one's driven over to second, scooped up by Crane, over to Hubbard, it's short, in time! Wisconsin converts the double play. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Sherdaisney for Wisconsin. Pitch by Wallace will be a ball. Skyler Sherdaisney for the Badgers up to bat. The junior from the Woodlands, Texas. Here's the pitch from Wallace. And off the bat from Sherdaisney, she's going. It's into left field, it's over to second, and slides into second safely. Absolutely. Now Riley Crane up to bat for the Badgers, one runner in scoring position. Here's the pitch from Wallace. Over to the left side, Andrews gets it over to first base. Felder over to third, a tag attempt, but safe at third. Not in time, but a good attempt from the left side infield. Attempting to get that out at third, and they were oh so close. And with one out, this is exactly where the Huskers, well, except for the runner being on third, given the situation, this is where they want to be. Absolutely, and we've seen a change in approach from this Badger offense, attacking that first pitch from the last couple batters, and it's gotten runners in scoring position. Now one at third base for the Badgers. That brings up first hitter Katie Keller. Again for Wisconsin. In the first inning, she grounded out to second. And Keller last year had an on-base percentage of 521. 
So it's dropped a little here, sitting at 432. Keller, what, really what it comes down to is that strikeout to walk rate, it's nearly, nearly even. 17 walks on the year, 13 strikeouts. She's hit the ball with six home runs and nine doubles, but patience is a virtue, and that is going to increase that on-base percentage, so you're seeing Keller swing a lot more this year. So the 2-1 pitch is high. Be 3-1 on Keller. Wallace still trying to find a comfortable zone for her today. And honestly, Skyly in this spot, three and one count, one out, runner on third. You are okay with the walk. And she'll send it over through the infield past Billy Andrews, and that'll bring Sherdesny in for the Badgers. And with Sydney Gray and Billy Andrews over there, but Huskers in a spot for a double play here. Wallace with the 0 0 pitch. And she cannot get a call there. It'll be a ball outside for Wallace. Kayla Conwent up to bat, runner on first. One out for Wisconsin. Here's the 1 0 pitch. And a breaking ball there called a strike for Wallace. Yeah, Wallace needs to be careful here against Kayla Conwent. Kayla Conwent, the magic number with her is nine. She's ninth in the Big Ten in batting average, and she has nine home runs in the year, which is good for seventh, or actually tied for seventh in the Big Ten. So she brings that power with what she's done in her 34 hits this year. Another high one there for Wallace. So 2 1 count on Conwent, and just being patient there again, Josh. Yeah, the grad student has a little bit of experience, I think we can say. We can say that safely, the former Gatorade Player of the Year, back-to-back -back years in high school in 2015 and 2016. So Conwent has been around the game for a while. Here's a 2-1 pitch outside again for Wallace. Trying to get that call from Tanya Gehrig behind the plate, the home plate umpire for today's game. Huskers defensively, they're aligned correctly, they're shorter. They're pretty shallow in left field, but out in right, they are playing deep. And a safety pitch right down the middle from Wallace. It's a full count with one out on Conwent. Runner at first, Keller over on first base there. And Keller only with one stolen base attempt. She's converted, but one for one, not the biggest margin to judge off of. And the swing and miss from Conwent uses that fastball cutter, and it works its way inside. There's nothing more dangerous than when a ball, a fastball cuts to the inside on a hitter. It's usually you expect a lot of those cuts or the breaks on the breaking ball. There's a swing and a miss there. To, to work to the outside, when you're a right-handed pitcher, it's tough to work that ball moving on an angle to the right. And I mean, Wallace, Wallace excuse me, you know, has a lot of experience, a lot of innings pitched, and has a lot in her arsenal that gives her that ability to work with different pitches to give different looks to the teams. Brooke Kuffle up to bat for the Badgers. In her first appearance, she popped out to third and she already has two strikes recorded on her with two outs for Wisconsin. Kuffle looking to advance. Keller at first base, and here's the pitch. Low, call the ball. And Wallace just working the outside pitches consistently all day today. Wallace looking for her sign. Here's the one-two pitch. High and outside again, cannot get it to go. Yeah, she is staying completely away from Kuffle. Kuffle hasn't done too much damage. Only four homers on the air, 28 hits and 82 at bats. She struck out a ton with 16 Ks. So trying to stay away from her. And fouled off by Kuffle there with the 2-2 pitch. She sends it back and just chip it away there. Yeah, Wa Wallace is playing mind games right there. Work a few pitches to the outside. Okay, let's cut it back to the inside and 
Cuffle was ready for it, but got way on top of that and fouled it off of Ava Breadwell's shoe. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Outside, again, cannot get it to go for Wallace today. Needs to tighten it up as the strike zone seems to be a little bit smaller today. If I'm Wallace here, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the high fastball. It's a full count pitch inside. Looks for it to be called a strike. And it just does not go her way. Ava Breadwell stuck there with the frame, and that sends Kuffle to first and Keller over to second. Yeah, Breadwell had a nice frame, but at the end of the day, Wallace, that one was outside. And again, in a spot like that, I trust your instincts, and I really would give the hitter a high fastball. Everyone's licking their chops at the opportunity to send the ball out. Schlosser up to bat. She'll watch the first one in, called a strike for Wallace. And the last one, Schlosser hit a bullet out to the outfield to get a double. It was right center, and she created a spark for the Badgers. And right to the same spot, this time on the ground, that'll be bring one in. That's Keller, who gets in safely, an attempt to tag Kuffle over at second, but cannot get it in time. Schlosser will make it over to first and drive one in. Four to two is the score. Nebraska's leading, but the Badgers are on their way back. Yeah, Schlosser's done a great job of working that right half of the field. I mean, has that leadoff double, I say swing late. And Angelopoulos right back to the pitcher. Wallace gets that out as she sends it over to Felder. And Josh, you were saying, I would say swing late, but instead she goes for that first pitch attack. And Wallace able to get the final out of the inning. The Badgers looking to make a comeback as they score two. In the top of the third, Nebraska leads four to two on Big Ten Plus. You know, didn't get to first cleanly the first time around, but get on it early and fire it over to Sydney. Sydney Serdashny or Ellie Hubbard. Serdashny fourth in the Big Ten in errors this year. Ellie Hubbard sixth in the Big Ten in errors this year. That, that's the play right here because we've seen them bobble several several ground uh, routine ground outs. And if you look over to Crane and second Crane, I, I think when she sees Hubbard or Serdashny have a hard time handling the ball, it throws her game off, especially on those double play balls. Schwartz forced a swing and a miss there by Gray. The first one was high and away. So we have a 1-1 count on Sydney Gray here. No outs. She's the first batter for the Huskers in the bottom of the third, looking to add some more. Here's a 1-1 pitch. And it's low. Remain a ball. Sydney Gray, another Husker with a strong approach at the plate. And Maddie Schwartz challenging her in the circle. The 2-1 pitch. And Gray sends it over to Crane. Crane to Keller, and that's a first out for the Badgers. This Nebraska team grounded out into a 4-6-3 double play last time out. Maya Felder watches the first one. It'll be called a strike, and Felder a team captain for this Husker squad, a leader on the team. Our first at bat, it's a ground out to shortstop, looking to get it past and find a way on base to spark something for Nebraska. A pitch to the outside, called a ball. You talk, and you talk about Felder being the captain, I mean, she's a veteran. The Fresno, California native has played for New Mexico State in the Western Athletic Conference and obviously Oregon in the Pac-12, she's seen a variety of softball being played and coming in and being a veteran presence for this Nebraska team, I think, Skyly, it has helped them a lot, especially last year with their conference championship, right? You have a lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen, but her and players like Cami Barra, I think really helped elevate this team in the sense that they know what it's like to go through those experiences. And bringing that knowledge to a group of young players it's so valuable.
Felder watches that one in for another strike. It's a 2-2 count, and like you said, it's just valuable to have leaders on the team like Felder who can teach the others how to become that leader. 2-2 pitch from Schwartz into Felder. Felder sends it over to the left side. A snag by Sherdace, and he sends it over to first base and bobbled. Felder reaches first on an error. I think she would have had a shot to get her out. Brooke Andrews up for the Huskers. She'll send it to second base over to shortstop and over to first, but Brooke able to make it in time. Felder out at second. Hubbard and Crane. Felder, I think if she had a better leadoff, she's safe at second, but nonetheless, two outs. Huskers still have a runner on first. Abby Squire hit by pitch, will be sent over to first, and Brooke Andrews advances to second base. That brings up Ava Breadwell. And that, and that can be tough sometimes. It really depends on how Tanya Garrick, who's behind home plate today, and there's a swing and a miss on a breaking ball there. Abby Squire, or Ava Breadwell, excuse me, attacks the first one, but unable to get a piece of it. So it really depends on the umpire that's behind the plate, but you, know, you talk about the strike zone, it's usually knees to about a little above the waist, about belt, uh, the height of the belt. And you know, that varies player to player. And for people that rely, uh, rely, I would say, the vertical side of pitching and, and, and putting the ball in the zone, it can be a little easier, but I think if you're going horizontal, that comes down to how the umpire is seeing it. And the last one, outside by Schwartz, but stopped by Angelopoulos to prevent the runners from advancing. And Breadwell, here's a 1-1 one -one count. Up deep into center field, going back and back and caught by Schlosser for the third out of the inning. Pitch from Wallace will nick the inside elbow of Ellie Hubbard. She'll be sent to first base, and Wallace not off to the start. She was expecting to have the lead, but Wallace has looked shaky. And a couple hit batters could prove to be vital for Wisconsin. Peyton Bannon up to bat for Wisconsin. Ellie Hubbard over at first. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Wallace. And Bannon will send it over the left side, get it past Gray into the outfield, and that'll be sending Hubbard in to score. But Rhonda Ravel will be visibly upset as the ball got stuck over on that left-hand side. Squire unable to get it cleanly and Skyler and they should allow for the runner to go back on third <laughs> right so now the Badgers have two on base two in scoring position Hubbard over at third and Skyler sure days knee up to bat here's the pitch by Wallace outside and high for another ball and sure days knee really looking to be that spark that hopefully ties it up if you're the Badgers The pitch from Wallace and a check swing by Sherdashny, but cannot get it to go. Yeah, interesting to see what Skyler's approach is going to be at the plate here. I mean, batting 264 on the year with the double last uh, last time up. Bat she bats 321 with runners in scoring position. And well, judging by my math abilities, she has two runners in scoring position, but patience pays off here, takes the ball. It's a bases loaded, no out situation, Skyler, for Courtney Wallace. And the best case scenario here is you're looking at a strikeout right now. And Tradashny, a good approach there, watching all of those balls to get the bases loaded, and now sets it up for Riley Crane with zero outs. And you've got if you're Courtney Wallace, you gotta be feeling some pressure here. And Crane 0 for her last five. 0 for 1 on the day today. She sees strike one and 0 for 4. Last time out in the second game of that doubleheader against Northwestern on Sunday. Wallace gets the first one to go her way. An 0-1 count against Crane, bases loaded. 
Wisconsin trails by two in the fourth. So one pitch from Wallace. And sent to the left-hand side by Crane, but a foul. It'll come back and hit the net. Recording two strikes on her now. A little bit more pressure added on Crane than she originally had coming into this at bat. Yeah, it's important for Wallace here if she decides to go breaking ball, not to leave it hanging over the plate. Wisconsin's done a great job of seeing that through today. But if you're looking in terms of the fastball, which is what she just threw. Yeah, there's some situations you want to go high and make the hitter chase, but if she tries to place it on the outside of the plate like she has been doing, it's the same case as the breaking ball. Wisconsin has been, they've gotten in rhythm with hitting that, with that ball. Wallace with, sent the pitch in, it hit the ground and Crane attacks it. It'll be a foul ball as she continues her at bat. The home plate umpire, Tanya Gehrig will walk back out with Wallace. So one to count against Crane here. Bases loaded, Hubbard at third, Bannon at second, and Sherdashny at first. Here's the pitch from Wallace. Over to the right side, thrown in, out home plate, and will get the out before one scores. That was a good decision by Felder there to immediately send it into Breadwell at home plate to get the leading out. Yeah, Felder with great instincts, but with great instincts, she was also in the right place at the right time. That ball placed perfectly at her feet. A quick two hopper, scoops it up, and has that connection right at the plate with Ava Bradwell to get that first put out of this inning. And again, Huskers. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Wallace with the first pitch. It'll be outside for a ball. And like you said, Keller with a big opportunity here, but Nebraska has the confidence to limit their opportunities, even with bases loaded. Wallace with the 1-0 pitch into Keller. It'll be high for a ball. Wallace shaking her head, not the pitch she intended for. Yeah, and with it being a two-run ball game, I think you just have to go fastball over the plate. Trust your defenders. I know it's top of the order, but you can't afford to go down 3-0. You have to find a way back unless she feels very confident about her breaking ball to the outside of the plate. Breadwell set up on the outside there, and that's exactly where Wallace pitched it on the outside, but cannot get it to go. It's a, another ball on Keller. Well, Skyly, this is the interesting situation. It's a 3-0 count with the bases loaded with one out. You know a fastball is coming over the heart of the plate. If you're Keller, do you swing or do you take the walk? Here's a 3-0 pitch, and she swings. It'll go out to left field. Squire's running up, and it drops just foul. Squire unable to get there in time. Yeah, the wind. A friend of the Huskers there. So this one's popped up. It was going to stay fair. I want to say about 8 to 10 feet. But making the run there, Abby Squire let that one go foul. If she makes that play, though, in foul territory, that is huge for the Huskers, especially with this bases loaded situation at hand. 3 1 pitch, and she sends it foul again, this time behind her on the left side. So it's a full count on Katie Keller. Bases are loaded, there's one out, and everyone's feeling the pressure here. Courtney Wallace, 3-2 pitch inside to Keller. Keller sends it to the right side. She'll get it over to right field, and Neal will send it in, but not in time. Bannon will score on the single. To get it in on the one hopper, doesn't bobble the ball. And Conwent sends it over to left field. Abby Squire tosses it in. Another one scores for the Badgers. They tie it up at four. And the Badgers are rolling with one out. Nebraska looking for the momentum to stop and start going their way. And here's Cuffle up to bat, and she'll send it over to the left-hand side. It's foul on the ground. 
And the Badgers are just attacking the early pitches now against the Huskers. A couple bats, 500 with the bases loaded, but that number might be a little inflated. That might be more of a one for two or a two for four number, but hey, you know what? 50% is 50%. One, one count on Kuffel. Crane clapping her hands at third, encouraging Kuffel. You got this. While well, the Huskers looking at Wallace to get out of this one. And Crane, Keller, and Conway on the bases are ready to run. And Kuffel sends it back behind her for another foul ball. Two strikes on her now. Still one out and bases loaded. And like you mentioned, the base runners are just clapping their hands. I think they're pretty eager to get off the base and start running home. Wisconsin would love nothing more than a bases clearing double right now. So one, two pitch and a swing and a miss. Will retire Brooke Kuffel for the Badgers. Her 20 RBIs, that stat, Skyly, could be increased very quickly. Wallace still looking for that outside call. She sends it, but recorded a ball. Low and outside for the first attempt. And here's the pitch, watched again by Schlosser, just taking her time being patient and Wisconsin head coach Yvette Healy encouraging her to just wait for the perfect pitch there take her time make sure she sees it in and that's exactly what she's doing as she's taking the first two balls here's the 2-0 pitch outside again but called a strike this time for Wallace gets that one to go it's always fun when the home plate umpire I think likes to bet I know it's nothing personal against us, but when they like to take an extra three or four <laughs> seconds to make the call, it's like, ball, strike, <laughs> anything? Yeah, umpire Garrick's got us covered today. 2-1 pitch outside, but this time it's a ball. Three one on Molly Schlosser, bases loaded. It's a tie ball game at four, but if Schlosser can get one through the infield, Wisconsin has a chance at their first lead of the game. Here's a three one pitch from Wallace. Low gets past Breadwell. And Breadwell was not able to get it back in time to Wallace to prevent Crane from scoring. Yeah, I mean, that, that run's coming home anyways with three balls there. It's more of just making sure that Keller doesn't come racing home from third. But all the runners advance. Angelopoulos up to bat. Conklin advances to second. Schlosser over to first. And Wallace has given up five straight runs. All five are earned. Wisconsin with their first lead of the game, five to four, and three of those runs have come in this inning. Bases remain loaded, two outs. Kristana Angelopoulos up to bat. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle for a strike. Oh, it's getting a little mojo back. I mean, you definitely have to imagine the confidence is down right now for the right-handed pitcher for the Huskers. But now it's about taking those baby steps. What can you do to slowly get it back? Wallace trying everything to do just that. She'll send it inside, but it's high. Another ball against Angelopoulos. I love the look there. Off-speed pitch, high up at the belt level, almost chest level. To Angelopoulos, almost baiting her to hit a slow ball up high. Who would, I would certainly swing at that. 2-1 pitch from Wallace. Sends the opposite way from Angelopoulos, but foul. Not the pitch she wanted. Sends it outside, gets it to go foul, and just chipping away. So it's a right-handed pitcher against a left-handed batter here again from Wallace. She's seen this multiple times today. It's a 2-2 pitch. And a foul ball, it'll be sent 
backwards off the head of Ava Breadwell, but she has a helmet on, so. That's why it's there. It's like the old <laughs> noggin. I, I like how Wallace and Angelopoulos' names rhyme. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, the syllables, yeah, a little off, but <laughs> Wallace to Angelopoulos. Oh, that, that just flows perfectly. It does. Yeah, it does. Here's Wallace again, 2-2. Two, two. Outside, Angelopoulos looks that one off. And Wallace just taking a little extra time than she normally does, waiting at the back of the circle. Taking an extra breather here. The runners haven't been the most successful against her with two outs, batting 227 this year. Angelopoulos sends it over to Sydney Gray. Gray gets the tag for the third out of the inning. Wisconsin, what a top of the inning. They score three and go up five to four over Nebraska. Yeah, they had Courtney Wallace's number uh, down to a T. Down to a science, the, the science of it was unbelievable. I mean, they recognized uh, the strength of her fastball to the outside of the plate. They were seeing the breaking balls through. Uh, they were hitting the ball all over the infield. I mean, even through uh, the stellar left side of the field where Sydney Gray and Billy Andrews are, the outfield, I mean, they did what they could. They stayed in front of all the hits. They didn't let anything get past them. They made the plays that they needed to. It was really just... Courtney Wallace was not able to get going. Uh, she got forced, as like I like to say, on her, on her heels in, in scrambled egg mode, right? I mean, you're forced to make a lot of decisions that you don't want to. It's uncomfortable, and especially in baseball or softball when you have pitches and, you know, you have three balls versus no strikes or 3-1 or count with the bases loaded or that full count. There's a lot of pressure, and I think, I mean, Wallace limited the damage to a sense, but she's allowed five runs in the past two innings. Newland gets it off the bat over to third base. It'll be sent over to first for the first out, and Sherdashny. Caitlin Neal, my message to her is be patient in this spot. And so far, she does just that, watching the first one. An outside ball from Schwartz. Neal with 11 doubles on the season so far and just looking for something to get on base here. Yeah, it doesn't even need to be a double like you were saying. I mean, she'll take anything. Up the middle, over to Crane. Crane sends it over to Keller for the second out, so two early outs back to back. Rhonda Revelle has a lot of confidence in Andrews. Two outs, here's the first pitch. And not a typical pitch that we see Billy Andrews swinging at, a changeup there from Schwartz and an off-speed pitch sends Billy Andrews swinging. She almost flew out of her out of her shoes there. It's the 0-1 pitch from Maddie Schwartz and Andrews watches that one outside. Yeah, Back-to-back off-speed pitches loses a little bit of the control on that last one as it goes way awry and outside both batters boxes. And for Andrews here Again, you have a lot of firepower coming from behind you. Andrews is a swinger. So trust her instincts here. On one pitch, and she goes swinging for that one, but sends it behind her as well, this time just chipping away. And Maddie Schwartz has the advantage here. Pitchers count 1-2 on Billy Andrews, but Billy Andrews Bring some patience to the plate, something that a lot of players are still learning how to do. The one-two pitch low. It'll hit the ground before reaching the plate. A ball for Andrews. Takes another breather. Now if Andrews wants to play the wind, swing late here. Because if she gets enough under it, it could leave. But Billy Andrews has a lot of power, so if she wants to swing to left field, odds are it might still leave. The 2-2 pitch from Schwartz inside, and a swing and a miss from Billy Andrews. Uncharacteristic of Andrews with a strike out there, but the Badgers are just using all their momentum here as we prepare for the top of the fifth. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. On as that one's fouled back. 
They had, uh, Nebraska had a runner on second and third. Kaneda was tagged out in a rundown as she was, she had a pretty big leadoff. I don't think she was going to steal home, but she had a big leadoff. And Angelopoulos tagged her out in conjunction with Skylar Serdashny. And then Brooke Andrews didn't strike out cleanly on three pitches, but all three strikes were swing and, miss swing and misses on breaking balls and off-speed pitches. Yeah, what a sticky situation there mm -hmm. for Nebraska to be in. I mean, they were set up perfectly. They had the bunt. It was executed perfectly and just couldn't convert. That one grounded softly over to second, scooped up by Kaneda, over to Felder in time. Over to first. What a pretty scoop by Caitlin Kaneda there. Well, I think they're saying. Yeah, they're calling foul ball there. That might have hit the plate, and it did. I think Rhonda Ravel is going to have a chat with home plate umpire. Time to get. I realize Crane isn't running. Play's probably dead. But that ball's in play, and that takes a mean bounce off the glove of Sydney Gray. And Wisconsin, their bats are rolling right now, Skyly. Well, Gray's approach. That pitch in for a strike. No outs. Katie Keller up to bat with a runner on first. Crane, two for three on the year, stealing. Or, excuse me, three for five stealing this year. Sees that one, it's a high grounder. Oh, perfect placement, but the double play cannot be made. It's a good job of Keller of running it through, but I think the way that ball was hit, I mean, it was sky high the second it hit the ground. With the ball from the glove to the hand. Had great feet placements. That one is gone in right field. Caitlin Neal playing the field. What a snag by Neal over there to get two out. Excuse me, that's Kuffle up to bat. Nebraska's gonna have to find a way to do the same thing. That one grounded over to Sydney Gray. Clean across the diamond over to Felder and Wallace gets out of the inning cleanly, unscathed. Hits together just to score a few. Pitch number one of the inning for Schwartz. Again, big shout out to the crew for making this all possible. Kylie, Brendan, everybody involved. Thank you for making this presentation of Big Ten softball possible. And again, shout out to the camera operators. I mean, we have a window open and it's chilly, but they're actually out there. So that one's driven by Squire in the left center. That one gets down, it's at the wall. Squire rounding first, getting into second, and it's a stand up double for the Huskers. That is the way to start it. It's grounded out to short and flo flown out to center. So. Loves the action on the left side and right up the middle. They're looking to back, get the Huskers back into this ball game. And she sees ball one. Again, Squire on second base. Three for three stealing on the year. And we've seen the Huskers get aggressive on the base path. It doesn't matter which base they're on. No, it doesn't. You have a runner in scoring position. So if you're Nebraska, your goal is to get them in. But if anything, just get them over to third and have the next person up try and score them to tie it back up again. That one inside, 2-0 the count on Ava Breadwell. And Breadwell is characterized by head coach Rhonda Ravel. I mean, not only athletic and a student of the game, but just an A-plus character. She has that great personality as a sophomore to really be a leader on this team and exemplifies what a true Husker softball player is on and off the field. And part of carrying out that vision of on the field is seeing ball number three there and being patient in the batter's box. It's three and out of the count with a runner on second. And a pinch hitter is up to bat for the Huskers. Selena Felix. Strike one right down the middle there. That's a, Sky Lee, I want to get your opinion on that situation. It's a 3-0 count. It's baseball or softball. It doesn't matter. 3-0 count. Are you swinging? No, I'm taking the pitch. 
3-0 count. Well, it depends on the situation, exactly, I suppose. Yep. Off, it's high. Oh, there you go, Sky. Sky, they called it. I, <laughs> right. It's also got to be a perfect pitch as well. I mean, he's only had two other plate appearances besides that, but has made appearances and defensive substitutions as an outfielder. So there's the anticipated attempted bunt there by Felix. Looking for a sack bunt. Draw the third and first baseman in. Here's the bail. That one outside. Yeah, so the strategy there is Serdashny is in for that opposite side bunt, but you have to leave Crane and Keller back not so much about playing first, but she could have a really good solid hit over to that side of the field. I mean, she is a lefty after all, but the odds of her pulling a fastball to the outside versus bunting to the outside, it's more of a bunt opportunity. She bunts that one foul, one and two the count. You have to be more careful here, a bunt, a bunt foul one more time, and she's out on a strikeout. So now Sherdashny will report, return to a more normal positioning back by third base. Yeah, is that, that is expected with, you know, more likely of a swing coming here unless she feels very confident about keeping the bunt in play. That one outside. Two and two the count. Ronda Ravel giving some encouragement over to Felix. And if you're Felix, you just want to chip away and I would say hope to get walked. Tessa Magnamino in the bullpen for Wisconsin. There's the payoff. That one fouled back. And that's a good take there from Felix. You know, you're not, not a typically more experienced player in Felix, but when you get up in this situation, what you want to do is just keep chipping away until you can make something happen. She wasn't able to get a bunt like I think Ronda Ravel would have hoped, but now just chipping away and hopefully put something in play and prevent a strikeout. That one fouled back. And Felix fe feeling comfortable. The past two pitches have been fastballs on the outer edge of the plate. Now it's important to be careful. She could go breaking ball or fastball on the inner half of the plate. Skyly, how would you approach that? I think you just approach it as normal. And if anything, if it is inside and in the strike zone, just swinging at it and hoping it either goes foul or just put the ball in play. At the end of the day, you just want to move the players forward, so. Oh, a, outside, that's three in a row to the outside. And I think that was a risky watch there by Felix. Now she has a full count, but I think that was a little too close for comfort if I was in that position. There's full count. Big one coming here from Schwartz. Schwartz deals. That one driven over to the left side, and it's dropped. But the force out play is made at third. Squire is out at third. Bredwell advances to second, and Felix advances. Most ideal situation the Huskers want to be in because double play ball is in effect here. Yeah, I do give credit to Felix, though. She was down in the count early mm -hmm. with those bunt attempts but she really just chipped away and made something happen at the end of the play. She didn't get the runners over like she would have hoped, but she still made something happen and forced a little bit of pressure that was obviously seen in Hubbard's error over uh, shortstop. And a fastball pretty up high in the zone. It's called a strike looking on Caitlin Neal. Billy Andrews on deck, one ball, one strike, one out. Runners on first and second for Neal. Neal's one for two on the day. Singled for two RBIs. Back in the second inning, that helped the Huskers jump out to that early 4-0 lead. Neal swings and misses there, one and two the count. Neal batting 304 with runners on. 
And you know, if you're Neil, you want to try and get it to the right side to give Breadwell a greater opportunity to get home. Here's the bail. Outside, two balls and two strikes. Neil the lefty has struck out 13 times versus walking three times on the year, so has a higher swinging rate than a walk rate. That one driven and fouled nearly into the Nebraska bullpen, and a nice young fan has that in the nice grass area. Breadwell loving it at second base, encouraging Neil to keep swinging. And as a base runner, that's what you have to do, just give your batters some encouragement to send them home and put the ball in play and move the runners forward to create scoring opportunities for Nebraska. With the right hit here, whether it leaves the park or not, could completely change the game as that one is driven over to Serdashny. It's knocked down. All the runners are safe. My goodness, Breadwell is advancing home on the missed throw over to second. Runners on the corners. Felix works her way over to third. And a pivotal, pivotal mistake made by Serdashny on the throw over to Crane. And we've seen her get off to a jump. So she was going if she was going to throw that ball. She did, and it just happened to go past for an easy, comfortable stand-up uh, score there to tie it up, but that was a very risky play by Shardashi to send it over to second base, and it just didn't work out in her favor. Wind has died down to 17 miles an hour to the southeast, and the reason I bring that up is the power hitter, Billy Andrews, the top of the order for the Huskers is up. One ball with one out. Two Andrews, the off-speed pitch, line to Shardashi. And the double play is converted by Wisconsin. The Badgers come through at the top. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Andrews drives that one into shallow left field. And a magnificent catch is made by Hubbard. The shortstop sends this one to extra innings. Feeling that impact, but able to get past it and end the last inning successfully. Crane chops that one foul. Wallace at 133 pitches. Do you think she'd hit 200 if she wanted to? I mean, she could. <laughs> If it gets that far, one and one the count. Crane reached on an error last time up in the sixth. 0 for 3 on the day. Crane sees that one for strike number two. And my goodness, it'd be one big break. That one grounded through the hole and the hitting, the hitless streak is ended for Riley Crane as she is on first. Here's Katie Keller in that leadoff spot, fouls that one into the Nebraska bullpen nearly. And my goodness, there's probably 10 kids wrestling for that ball right now. Gosh, I'd still do that at a ballpark. Oh yeah, very big prize there. Keller last year had the seventh best batting average in the country and led the Big Ten and ranked sixth in Division I with doubles. So doubles is her game. And honestly, Skyly, it's kind of weird. After watching a lot of college softball, college baseball, and even the MLB, leadoff hitters, it seems that doubles are really associated with their name. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you there. And I would also say that they're very aggressive. Yes. You would think that... As a leadoff hitter, you might want to take a couple pitches, just allow your team to see the ball and allow you to see a couple pitches, but that's not the case with Keller here. She's very aggressive, goes after the first pitch, and in fact goes after every pitch that's in her zone. Pitch by Wallace, fouled away by Keller. 
Two and two the count with no outs and a runner on first. That runner is Riley Crane. Katie Keller, two for four on the day. With two RBIs on two singles. Crane the lefty, sees it from the righty Wallace. Grounds that one over to first, taken by Feller. And over to Andrews in time to second. Gets Crane out there. Kayla Conwent with one out. Conwent grounds that over to Wallace for out number two. They read me the right way. They got off on the right start, running to second for the steal attempt as Wallace puts home strike number one. You just have to make the easy out at first. Because now you're at two outs. Anything gets you out of it. As There is some action in the Husker bullpen. The Wisconsin bullpen is currently empty. 0-1 pitch from Wallace to Cuffle. Breaking ball. I think the Husker fans wanted a strike there. Just, just a guess. Yeah, just a guess. <laughs> Many boos from the crowd there after that call. Cuffle bats 154 with two outs and just a credit to Wisconsin. Just fighting every which way in this game. They've never really had it handed to them. They were down early in the first two innings. They score five straight runs. And then they had plenty of chances with runners in scoring positions in the fifth, sixth, and seventh innings and just could not come up and get the job done. As Kuffel takes... She leans into that one to draw the hit by pitch. <laughs> that one fouled back. Kuzak pinch hit it last time out against Northwestern, where she doubled as well. So has that experience coming in late to the game, but Molly Schlosser is the real trouble here. Doubled and singled her first two times out and then walked and grounded out to short most recently. But has two runners on here to do some damage as she sees that pitch to the outside. Two and one count with two outs. Coming up on 150 pitches for Courtney Wallace there in the circle. Wallace will need at least, unless she gets contact here, need two more pitches to hit 150s. That one is outside, three and one the count. And a tricky spot for Wallace. And a lot of the Husker players playing deep just Keeping anything in front is their mindset right now. Billy Andrews almost back at the turf, and Caitlin Canada about to step away from the turf on the right side. Left field playing more inside. That one inside. The bases are loaded. She's just really going to have to rely on her defense in this situation. Christina Angelopoulos flies that one nearly to the cars in the parking lot. Only one count. Angelopoulos 0 for 4 on the day. Back-to-back -back grounders to Wallace to start the day. And then did so back in the seventh. So has had trouble hitting the ball out of the diamond, even past the pitcher's circle. That went to the outside. Wallace looking to go to her sweet spot there. But the umpire sees that more as a sour spot. And it's a ball. Yeah, Courtney Wallace just really comfortable trying to get it to that outside corner of the plate. But today it just has not been working for her. That one outside again, ball number two. Wallace's command. I mean, when you're throwing 153 pitches, you have to wonder that some fatigue might be going on. The batter. That one low and outside, three and one the count. It's a big one here from Wallace. The senior fires over the middle and strike one. Full count, bases loaded, two outs, 
Top of the eighth in extra innings to Christana Angelopoulos. Can she bring home what could be the game winning hit? The Huskers would have another chance to bat in the bottom of the eighth, but can she do damage and break the ice or will Wallace ice up the hitter? Angelopoulos does not blink there and fouls it away. She means business, Skyly. <laughs> business she means, Josh. Angelopoulos with a good cut there, just chipping away and making Wallace work just a little bit harder than she needs to just by continuing to foul it off. Pitch by Wallace, that one driven back. Heads up, kids. Free ball and the kids come flowing out of the grass area to chase that ball. Full count remains. Wind gusts blowing about 15 miles an hour now to the right. That one to the outside, and the Badgers take the lead. Patience is a virtue, Christiana Angelopoulos. The sophomore, one of the backup catchers for the Badgers, pinch running. As that one is fouled back by Hubbard. Another aggressive approach by Ellie Hubbard here. As she swings at the first pitch offered by Wallace, bases loaded, and what a big opportunity for Ellie Hubbard. Wallace had numbers, but a couple of hit-by-pitches and walks have made this Wisconsin lead possible here in the top of the eighth, an 0-2 count. And there's Eden Dempsey on first, pinch running. Hubbard sees the pitch outside, one and two. And Wallace still trying to force it outside and try and draw a strike out there as that, as we know, is her go-to spot. But going to have to change it up to get herself out of this inning. That one over the middle for the punch out with a 10-4 record in the Big Ten, and Wisconsin with a 7-5 record in the Big Ten, sitting at that fifth spot. Here's the pitch. Squire singles to right field. And it's bobbled. Squire's rounding second. She might go for third. Kuzak can't get a handle on it. And Squire is elated at third. Mama mia, that's the way to get the bottom of the eighth started. So the change could be costly. Here's Ava Bredwell, the starting catcher for the Huskers. Sees ball number one. And all you need here is just contact, and it's a new ball game. I know we've said new ball game a lot tonight, but I mean, that's what it is when you have a back and forth game. But Skyly, we knew this would happen with the talent that Wisconsin has inside the circle pitching, as that one is inside for ball number two, and the power that the Huskers bring at the plate. I mean, it's an even match. Yeah, yeah, like you said, it's an even match. And what we were questioning was Wisconsin's ability to bring it at the plate for them, but they have done exactly that today. And it's just been an all round great performance by both teams. That one a little inside, three and oh, the count to Ava Bradwell. Abby Squire just waiting at third base. Squire is ready to run on contact. Bredwell set, sees the pitch. It's outside, the ball gets away. Squire advances, tie, ball game. Wow, what a crucial mistake by Angelopoulos. I know she didn't want it to get away from her, but just nicked the outside of her glove. So it's ruled a passed ball, an unearned run. Squire scores there. Bredwell is still batting. Oh, and she gets that base back. A hey, ball don't lie, right? But she was able to convert, get the ball in play, and that's what she needed to do. Looking for the same thing against her, against 
Schwartz here. Felix with the sacrifice bunt, the runner advances. Felix is out at first, but a great play to move Breadwell over. One out with a runner on second, and Caitlin Neal is up to bat for the Huskers. Two for three on the night. Pitch to Neal outside. And just to give an idea of where the defense is playing, Sir Dashney and Keller are probably about four or five steps back from being even with their bags. And Crane and Hubbard are standing almost perfectly straight across from each other, very far from the grass. Neal drives that one out to center field. Back at the wall, it's floating up. Schlosser makes the play for out number two, and that's huge for Wisconsin. Here's Billy Andrews, top of the order. Grounds that one over to second. It's bobbled on the play. Crane's throw is down in time. Sliding is Breadwell. And Ronda Ravel is jumping up and down, but so are the Badgers. Oh, hopefully, they're, they're going to need her the rest of the season. But yeah, they've put a lot of pressure on Courtney Wallace today, and she's she's delivered for them. I, I don't think you could ask anything more of Wallace at this point in the game. Here's Peyton Bannon. Bannon one for three tonight. Took ball one the first time up, sharply fouled to the left side. Man, if that one gets through Skyly, that is a dangerous ball and at least two bases if it stays fair. So Bannon with another huge opportunity. At this point, everything is crucial. If you're stepping up the, to the plate, you're expected to do your job. Again, Bannon third in the Big Ten with four triples on the year. That pitch by Wallace in there for a strike. It's a one-two count. Bannon composed in the box. Set grips the bat a couple times, grounds that one sharply foul to the left side, and Sydney Gray has to be on alert at that hot corner. The ball is headed there twice during this at bat, and you can expect it. If it's going to go in that area twice, it might as well go three times. Yeah, I think Sydney Gray is ready on her feet there over at third in her normal positioning, just a couple steps off of third base. That one outside, two and two the count. Bannon hitting 250 in a leadoff spot this year. And Wallace, Courtney Wallace actually gives up hits 39% of the time to leadoff hitters. So numbers favor the batter here. As that one's inside, full count. Courtney Wallace had the, had the pitcher's count at one and two, but Bannon's persistence and patience pays off here. It's full count. Bannon with an extra twist of the bat. Lines that one over to second. Kaneda with the snag out of the air. But it's good to see your, your infield have that versatility. Okay, one side you know you can trust to do one thing and the other uh, vice versa. One and all the count with one out. To Sydney Serdashny, or Skyler Serdashny, excuse me. It's been a long game. <laughs> Serdashny watches a strike there. One ball, one strike, one out. And Wallace attempting that outside corner all night and finally gets it to go. And what could arguably be one of the most important at bats by Serdashny. Serdashny sees a high fastball there, two and one the count to Serdashny. Again, the junior from the Woodlands, Texas. Had a 375 slugging percentage last year. 
Hoping to achieve those numbers again. It's a swing and a miss in the ground. And you could tell why her slugging percentage was so high last year. I mean, she loves to swing. There is no doubt. This year, 18 strikeouts is almost evened out with her 14 walks. But you can always sense when someone is more of a strikeout, more, you're more likely to strike out than walk. The, the patience versus the aggressiveness. She sees that pitch wide to the outside. Full count. Another full count. Another full count. It's been the story tonight. Pitch count at 174. Skyly, I was joking with you earlier, by the way, when I said could Courtney Wallace hit 200 pitches. But it's... And she, <laughs> she's on pace to do so, Josh. It's, it's almost realistic at this point <laughs> as that's fouled back by Sir Dashney. Sir Dashney's not making it easy for Wallace either, making her throw many more pitches than I think she would like. Wallace taking it like a champ, though. Sir Dashney not doing anything flashy, more or less just keeping in the moment. Grounds that one over to second. Canada over to first in time to Maya Felder. And Courtney Wallace gets out of back-to-back -back full count jams where she was actually ahead. Much stability in the batter's box as that one is lined out into center field. There's Kaneda working her way over from that second base spot. There's a new rain and a new sheriff in town at that second base spot for the Huskers. Kaneda, the lefty, sees the first pitch outside. And as I was referring to right before she had that put out, I mean, you talk about the transition from someone like Cami Barr to Caitlin Kaneda at second. And the offense and defense it really hasn't changed at that position for the Huskers, if not maybe even gotten better. Canada fouls that one to the left, but they've been fortunate enough to have that spot on lockdown for the past four or five years and this year. Yeah, not only do they have that second base position on lockdown too, they just have a solid defense overall, especially in the infield behind yes. the one who's in the circle who's already has an advantage. Pitch to Canada, that one driven to left field, slicing foul, and it stays foul. Bannon laid out. Yeah, Peyton Bannon. What a try there over in left field, sprinting towards the ball, but again, that wind, there's just a brick wall out there, and the ball seemed to have hit it, unable for Peyton Bannon to grab onto it. Caitlin Kaneda lives to see another day. Kaneda does live to see another day. Sees that one way outside. And Angelopoulos is very thankful there's nobody on base in that situation. The ball gets past her there. And that's why the game's tied. It was a pass ball. Two and two the count. No outs to Kaneda. The second baseman has done so much for this team on the defensive end as well as the offensive end tonight. Swing and a miss. A big strikeout for Maddie Schwartz. And for righties, you like their odds again with the way Hubbard and Serdashny have been playing it short in third. Here's Gray. Gray at the edge of that batter's box. See strike one to the outer edge of the plate. And you mentioned the edge of the batter's box, but it's basically disappeared. All the chalk is just wiped away at this point. So many slides into home plate at this point, just wiping it away. 42 degrees now in Lincoln. The winds died down to 15 miles an hour to the southeast oh. as a completely <laughs> wild pitch. That has me bamboozled, hits the net. Not something you typically see from Maddie Schwartz, but. Here's Schwartz, the payoff. That one inside for ball number two. Sydney Gray, one for three on the day. Gray sees that one inside for a strike. Two and two the count. And Schwartz, after 
I'll say it again, another bamboozling pitch. <laughs> comes back and evens the count at two and two. And I think that says a lot about the composure of Schwartz to throw a pitch like that and then work your way back into the count against a great hitter like Sidney Gray. A patient hitter like Sidney Gray. Gray grounds that one over to Hubbard. It's short. The throw in time over to first to Keller. And there's out number two. Routine play for Hubbard, the 6-3 out. And later in this game, we've seen great composure over at that shortstop position in Hubbard earlier in the game. A few unwanted errors, but able to settle down and just make the plays she's, she knows how to make. That one a very low swing for Gray. Here's Schwartz, one and one the count with two outs to Maya Felder. Here's the pitch to Felder. Inside, two and one the count. Schwartz, hitters hit a little over 22% with two outs. On the year, 59K is looking for her 60th strikeout on the year compared to 19 walks. Here's that one, it's driven over to second base, scooped up by Crane, over to first to Keller. It's in time. And the innings have hit double digits. We will play the 10th inning coming up. Who we relied on very heavily, and she would go the entire weekend as a lone pitcher. And so it was not uncommon to see her throw over 200 pitches. But for Courtney Wallace, I mean, this is not typically something she wants to do, but I think her goal is to finish this game out strong. And Rhonda Ravel has that confidence in her as well. That one driven out to right center, back at the wall is Brooke Andrews and makes the catch. And a sigh of relief from Courtney Wallace. A powerhouse for the Badger offense, looking to get something going. And like we mentioned, the wind just short of that one going out for Keller there. What a game changer that would have been. Yeah, that would have been something else. Inside, two and out of the count. Skyly, out of all the baseball games you've gone to, like, what's your go-to snack? My go-to snack, oh, it's gotta be popcorn. Salted respect that. butter popcorn. Hot dog with everything, but no ketchup, just the Chicago way. I respect the popcorn, though. You know, I think I respect that. every single one of these players is ready for a snack. I think they're ready for some popcorn, <laughs> some, and, and I think we dinner. should make a run. We'll do, we'll do a live remote. We'll do the broadcast in the car. We'll go get some popcorn and some hot dogs, and we'll bring them to both teams. As that one's fouled back by Conwin. I think it's the least we can do. Or get them some hand warmers. It's freezing oh, outside yeah. right now. It, it, it is a little chilly. Again, shout out to our camera operators who are working outside right now. You guys are rocking. And again, thank you to Brendan and Kylie and everyone back in the studio for making this game possible. Usually I say that when we sign off, but we're still in the top of the 10th and it's still a tied ball game as Kayla Conwent takes a walk there. She picked up the ball for Ava Breadwell there and tossed it back to her. Well, that's kind. It's Kind gesture. What's the kindest gesture you've ever seen in a ball game? Oh, I don't know. I, I think for me it has to be that Little League World Series. Her day has been retired, and here's Ava Kuzak, the freshman batting 121 on the year. Does not have a hit with runners on. Four hits in 33 at bats. And she started off as a pinch runner and subbed in to play right field. Sees that one over the middle for a steer right. And Cusack, one of two freshmen in the lineup currently with Crane hitting ninth. But primarily held by juniors and seniors. That run grounded over to Billy Andrews. It's short, she bobbles it and works its way into center field. The runners will halt. And Courtney Wallace's pitch count continues to rise, and that could have been 
A routine double play. Billy Andrews was expecting to get past her. Just a routine play, crucial in this moment. Unable to pull it in, and like you said, could have been a double play, which would have been huge for Nebraska. Wallace's pitch count at 188. Molly Schlosser, who's been the most dangerous badger tonight at the plate. Up in the count, 1-0, fouls that back 1-1. One one. So Sch Schloss Schlosser walking twice today. Her approach at the plate, as we know, is a little more patient, composed, just waiting for the right time, and I don't think she would be upset if she walked right now. Again, her walk back in the fourth inning with the bases loaded resulted in RBI. So I think when it comes to the situational play of Schlosser, she's comfortable in not just hacking at every ball. She will take it pitch by pitch and do what's best for the team. I think right now you're still in that hitting mindset because runners on first and second, you need to move them over, especially with the count at one and two. Wallace fires that one and it's fouled back and off the netting, but well, it's, it's not like wall ball where you can catch it off the wall. No, but I flinched for a second. Thought it was coming straight back at me, even with the netting there. Gets that, me every time. That would make for... I think we'd catch it. Hopefully. I think I'd have to do it because the, window, the window's <laughs> open over here, so pressure's on me. I mean, I'll protect my laptop at all costs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the gear that our crew's provided, that, that's important to you. And Courtney Wallace, nine pitches away from hitting that 200 mark. I don't think she wants to get there by any means. I don't think she wants to reach that mark, but. I don't think any pitcher wants to do that unless they absolutely have to, but. Wallace in another full count jam. We've seen this countless number of times tonight. This, this part of it is just experience right here. I mean, you think back to the days of when you're playing softball from what you've learned from when you're seven or eight years old to what you've gotten to at this point now and how you escape this jam. Every part of the game that you have studied leads up to this game-changing moment right here. Yeah, you know, and it's all about situational awareness. Just having that instilled in your players' brains. Uh, we have Conway over at second base. She she already is prepping for what she's going to do in any sort of circumstance by Schlosser here. Pitch by Wallace. Over the middle. Fouled up. It could stay in play. Filled her with the foul territory. Out, fly, put out. Out number two with runners on first and second. Seemed a little tough. I mean, it was going all sorts of which ways, but she was able to get under it, lean back just a slight bit, and pull it in for an out. The wind pulled that one a little to the south. And the first baseline faces north-south. The third baseline faces east-west. So that one's fouled back. I was ready for that one. <laughs> I'm ready. I got you. <laughs> One and one the count with two outs. Again, tied ball game, 6-6. Six, six. I don't think I've seen a more evenly matched ball game yet this season. 6-6 six, six in the 10th inning. That breaking ball nearly caught the outside, but it stays outside for ball number two. And I think you have to give credit to umpires Tanya Gehrig, Matt Jackson, Mike Hernandez. I mean, they've got to stay locked in. Just as much as the players, if not more, they have to make sure this game is called fairly and that they make the right calls. And, and I, don't see a, I don't see gloves on any of them, so their hands have to be a little chilly. That one grounded over to second. Scooped up by Kaneda. In time to Felder at first. And this ball game, well, it, it was going to continue anyways, but anyways, but it works in the favor of the Huskers. They have another chance to walk it off here in the bottom of the 10th to get to this point. That one's inside to Brooke Andrews. And Brooke Andrews, I'm not sure how many times she's been up to bat in the 10th inning, but I've said it multiple times enough to at this point where we know she's clutch in late game scenarios. 
and looking for another chance here. Breaking ball, inside placed perfectly by Maddie Schwartz. Her pitch count sitting at 128 right now. Credit to both Maddie Schwartz and Courtney Wallace for pitching through 10 innings of this game. What an incredible feat for those two. They're giving us a fun one to watch tonight. One and one the count to Brooke. That one off the ground, two and one. Again, Brooke Andrews with a big catch in right center field. To help retire the bottom of the tenth. It was not the third and final out. It was the first out. At the wall, two. And it was Keller who sent that one deep. That one wide to Brooke, three and one the count here. Another thing we've seen from Schwartz late in this game is a few wild pitches. Mm -hmm. Got to be affecting her, whether it's just the tiredness that comes with pitching 10 innings or the cold. No matter what it is, she's being affected in every aspect of her pitching right now. That one to Brooks, swing and a miss, and that's the off-speed pitch. I would not be surprised if Schwartz goes back to the high off-speed pitch. It has bothered Brooke Andrews all night. She has struck out in the fifth inning. That was the result back, back then as well. Could it be here in the bottom of the tenth? Schwartz might go breaking ball off speed high. Look for Andrews to play it safely. There was, again, off speed and high. Andrews was ready for it. Yeah, that's, that's Schwartz's specialty pitch there. Off speed and high, like you said. And Brooke Andrews, we have a full count. I don't think she's going to go out looking, or go out looking with intentions for a walk. I think she's just going to be aggressive. That's her mindset and go out swinging, if anything, just trying to chip away and get something in play to set something up for the rest of the Huskers. Camera crew just showed a fan with a nice souvenir to take home. And Brooke Andrews and I was heading wrong. to first. <laughs> Not be exactly what they want because of where they are in the game. And you can clearly see as Abby Squire fouls it back that there's little things, I think, with Wallace and Schwartz, as magnificent as they are both pitching tonight, there's little things that are starting to creep their way in that are resulting in these chances that are close to that game-winning run for either team. But it has not resulted in that. And, you know, if you're Courtney Wallace, you're telling your teammates in the dugout, she's getting tired like I'm getting fatigued as well. So she could give them an advantage by saying like attack early, you know, she's in the same situation. So she knows if she was a batter and if she was in that situation, she could give that advice to her teammates as well as Schwartz could do the same for her teammates. But in this situation, the Huskers up to bat and ready to take on Schwartz. Heard some oohs and ahs on the crowd on that off-speed pitch. That was a strike last time out here. Squire grounds it over to Hubbard. Hubbard fields it over to second in time, but Squire reaches first on that fielder's choice for the first out, so same result. Just taking it one, thing, one step at a time. Breadwell swings and misses on that off-speed pitch. Owen won the count with one out. It's two Huskers in a row attacking the first pitch, showing an aggressive mindset early on here. The sophomore, Kansas native. Look, they have an impact here. Swings and misses again. Shorts, even at 138 pitches, is just wheeling and dealing with confidence. And, and, and she's leaving those, those pitches hanging over the plate too. I mean, she feels that none of these Huskers can hit that off-speed pitch right now. And really, they're not used to it. She's feeding them more in than she has all game long, and she did it again. There it is out wide. The ball works its way in the center field. The runner advances Squire on the steal attempt from second. It's a throwing error by Angelopoulos, and Squire is on third. No, I don't think she's going to bunt. That one fouled away. It'll draw too many of those corners in, and it won't allow Squire to score and ultimately 
that's what they got to do. Squires got to score. That's the only way that they can end the game right now. So just getting the ball outside of the infield is what Felix is trying to do. Just get it past in the gaps, through the infield, over the infield, whatever she's got to do. Felix drives that one! Huskers win! Huskers win! Galabunga! How about that finish? Felix walks it off on a single to left field. The big red with the big finish to win the series opener against the Badgers from Wisconsin.